Good afternoon to everyone who is present here today. Welcome to the seventh uh, hearing of the 179th period session of the Commission. The name of the hearing is the name of children and adolescents in centers of social assistance in Mexico. The goal of this hearing is to present information on the conditions lived and the violations of human rights on children and adolescents without family care in social assistance centers that are private and public in Mexico. This hearing was requested by civil society organizations. We welcome all organizations present and also we welcome the participation of the state that is also present in this hearing. Thank you to both parties for joining us today for the commission hearing are very important as a system to monitor and gather information and foster dialogue. So we want to thank the presence of both parties. As many of you know, you know how these hearings work. First of all, the, the civil society will have 20 minutes. You will see a clock on the screen that will count the minutes. I always try I say I'm going to interrupt when the time is about to finish because I never do that, but please um, use the time properly. Then the representatives from the states, we have 20 minutes and the commission, we have 20 minutes to make uh, all the comments and um, observations. And then civil society, we have 12 minutes to make final comments and the state two more minutes in this hearing. I am the president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Um, to, today, we have the reporter of Mexico and the reporter on children and adolescents. Yes, Meralda, I was also the commission that also represents the Inter-American Commission, Commissioner May, Margaret May Macaulay. She is a commissioner for the rights of women. And I'm also here today with the Interim Executive Secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, and the Special Rapporteur on Social, Economic, Cultural, Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Also, we have all the team of the staff of the, Secretary, of the Executive Secretariat that make this possible, following up the situation in Mexico of children and adolescents, and all the staff that makes it possible for this meeting to take place. In this period of sessions, I will take the opportunity to say that I have not thanked all the interpreters. I have not mentioned them. So I want to take the opportunity to say hello to them. I apologize to them if I haven't done it before. You can access the interpretation, simultaneous interpretation. You can also access subtitles or caption for um, persons who need a hearing impairment. Uh, this is something we have implemented for this period of sessions so to make sessions more inclusive. I want to request you to keep your microphones off unless you are given the floor and keep your cameras on. Without further ado, I will give the floor to the civil society organizations and you have 20 minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Verdusco Verdusco. I am a victim of La Gran Familia or oh, Mama Rosa. When I was 12, I got to La Gran Familia Center in Michoacán. In that place, I was deprived of my liberty during six years where I suffered the following violation of my human rights. Constant sexual abuse on behalf of the staff of the center, psychological violence such as humiliation, disqualification, insults, among other physical punishment. I was locked in my room during months without the possibility of leaving. I didn't have food and when the food was there, it was rotting. I didn't have medical attention. Uh, they violating the, my right to identity. They changed my last name. We couldn't leave the center of if we leave, we were um, followed by the police, if we tried to escape, the police took us back there. In 2014, the BGR, 
uh, rescued me together with 530 victims. As my biological family did, was not presented, the BGR gave me the option of coming to City of Mexico without identity or support. I didn't have any ID that say that I'm Eduardo Verduzco Verduzco. In 2017, um, friend from that center committed suicide. We were roomies. I tried to save him life, but unfortunately he had no pulse. The executive commission that supports the victim only paid for uh, the burial and hide the suicide so as not to get to the media. They were weren't supporting victims in their attention. I started struggling to be um, to deal with the situation, but I found re-victimization and I had no support. I wanted to find justice because my the ones who violated my rights are in freedom. I express myself for them to deal with my case as in five years, I did not receive any attention from that institution. The officer threatened that they will make me disappear. They took me to the Mexico Puebla road. They say they would kill me and throw my body and no one would claim my body. Today, I have presented a writ of relief to access comprehensive reparation of damages. I have been um, in litigation against the CEAV and I have no reparation, no psychological attention. I do not have any documentation and I'm constantly re-victimized. Having lived this and surviving has broken me as a human being, as it was the responsibility of the state to guard my well-being as a child. They did not supervise what they were doing to us in the center. On the, uh, the police was an accomplice of the DIF and the state of Michoacan. As an adult today, I also feel vulnerable and not supported as I have not received the tools to have a reintegration into society. Good afternoon, commissioners and everyone present here today. Eduardo's testimony shows the vulneration to children and adolescents in, and that's why we are here. My number, my number is Veronica Valverde Chavez from Conexiones para Aprender. The goal of this hearing is to tell you the conditions under which uh, children and adolescents lived in Mexico as a result of a tutelary culture that resists the recognition of them as autonomous holders of rights, the lack of an efficient protection system, programs that provide real option of protection that leads them to um, institutionalization in public and private centers in which there's no supervision, no regulation with a human rights approach. Due to the fact that the Mexican state has now uh, assumed the responsibility as a guarantee of the rights uh, monitoring of the centers, Many abuses are committed against children and adolescents that are even tortured. The origin of the problem today is the lack of fulfillment of the Mexican state of the obligations of prevention, protection, respect, guarantee, and restitution of human rights, as well as the duties of supervision, certification, and surveillance of social assistance centers. As many times in practice, national and international standards are not applied to protect the comprehensive well-being of children that live in those centers. They do not comply with regulations on, about the treatment they should receive or the conditions in which they should live. Another problem is that in Mexico, there is a tutelary culture that does not recognize children and adolescents as autonomous holders of rights. There is a huge discrimination towards childhood. They're invisible before an adult's an adult so an adult center or the adults, due to this reason, many of them are victims of abuse um, of the organized crime, which shows the lack of uh, efficient public policies to strengthen family relations and the non-repetition of those violations. In Mexico, due to many reasons, children get to the DIF, our centers of social assistance, and instead of promoting programs to strengthen families or the application of alternatives to family care, many 
times without any study of what is the best for them. In many cases, they have detected that many violations are committed against them. Also, there's a problem of budget as childhood is not a central topic for a Mexican state, and this is reflected on the resources allocated for that reason. Those centers that carry out a good job do it without the necessary budget, which shows the conditions in which they are, and depends on the, well, uh, on the, on the will of the persons that are directing those, um, those centers, such as the um, Office of the General Attorney for children and adolescents. We should be clear, this is a structural problem that has not been solved as the state has not fulfilled with its duty. There is a problem with the sound right now. It is overlapping. Someone is speaking, overriding the speaker. Okay. So 33,000 children and adolescents were living in 175 homes, shelters uh, all over the country, but there is no national register detailing all centers, public or private, that exist today. Also regarding legal, physical and psychological conditions living, uh, that are lived by children. And if there is a re acknowledgement of the victim and restitution plan for those whose rights have been violated. National and international bodies have shown their concern on the violation of rights that have been proved in those centers of social assistance and have warned the Mexican state on that. There are cases that show the um, size of violations of children and adolescents in these centers that have even uh, been victims of tortures. So those were cases that um, had been we, that received recommendations on behalf of the commission. La Gran Familia, Mama Rosa, were, had places with bars and the children were subject of uh, burning, humiliated treatment, psychological, emotional aggression, sexual abuse, punishment, detention, doing, sm doing days in small rooms with no light, no food, no water. And they were victims of forced uh, child labor as they were asked to beg in the streets and they had no contact with their relatives. Many of them were changed their last names and registered on a different name. In Casitas del Sur, city of Mexico, they were beaten and sexually abused and there are some children that have disappeared. In Ciudad de los Niños, this case is really alarming because these places are being reopened even when more than 300 children um, were uh, victims of sexual abuse, deprivation of liberty, and torture. There, there is information in a lot of media in which they mention a human rights violation in those centers. The media shows that there are physical and sexual abuse. They are transferred to non-authorized centers. They do not provide information to relatives. And they mention centers such as Caimede from Yucatan, Albergue Sin Corazones, and Casa Hogar Cabanillas in Jalisco, Puerto de Fe, in Mexico, AC in Baja California, that should be investigated by the authorities. We are convinced that the centers mentioned by the commission, the aforementioned centers, um, there, there are violations against uh, the human rights of children and adolescents that are institutionalized, and there are different articles uh, photos and uh, testimonies expressing what is uh, what has happened in those centers. There are recommendations and reports issued by the commission and determining that those persons lived and experimented even uh, cases of torture. The Mexican state is not taking its responsibility even when children are uh, were are institutionalized. The state should keep its guardianship, guaranteeing the. Uh, enjoyment of each of their rights, thus, that does not happen as there is no supervision with a human rights uh, supervision. Thank you. And now I will give the floor to the next uh, representative. Good afternoon. My name is Angel Maria Ferrero, and I would like to talk about the reach of the obligations of the responsibility of authorities regarding institutional persons in private and public centers. 
is not reduced and it should be incremented or increased because they should protect the compl and comply with the standards. And because in this context, we are talking about girls, boys and adolescents and they require special protection. Uh, the authorities cannot uh, forget about the crimes that have been committed and they should prevent them and punish them as this has been expressed by the Committee Against Torture. In Mexico, all these centers are public. They have been under a concession and they operate according to the laws or according to the voice in the law. And also the lack of regulations are because of the omissions um, made by the states. Uh, we see here that there is a lack of understanding of the functions of certification of the centers and also an effort to uh, keep the operations in the dark. And this uh, position is reduce huge, uh, hugely any measure in uh, aim at preventing these attacks from happening again. One of the cases that is very important that is one of the 13 minors that were in a social assistance centers and they went they were sent to a clinic of drug treatment in the state of Morelos because many of the problems that have been denounced appear here due to the uh, protests of the uh, children and adolescents. The National Commission of Human Rights wanted to access the center, but he, they couldn't. Two months after, uh, the a ministry uh, requested to enter and they couldn't enter under the argument that the national system for the comprehensive development of family has the legal custody or uh, wardenship of the minors and that they have no obligation of letting anybody else to enter. Uh, then they were allowed to enter, but they were not allowed to make interviews. Then the three young adolescents were sent to a drug treatment clinic of religious uh, characters. Um, and after that, the national mechanism presented two complaints, one against the social center for, for, for practicing torture against adolescents and also against the addiction center, addiction treatment center for not allowing them to enter and for the disappearance of two uh, young people. And that's why we want to request authorities not to weaken the mechanisms of prevention and combat against torture in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the country. And that they allow the national mechanism for the protection of uh, adolescents to comply with the uh, powers that it has according to the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Alfonso Poiré, and I'm also a consultant of one of the organizations in Mexico. Our petitions are the following, that the Mexican states comply with the obligations derived in Article 1 of the Constitution and International Institute instruments to promote, respect, protect, guarantee the rights of girls, boys, and adolescents, especially those that are in public and private institutions. That implies uh, complying with the duty to provide health care in those as social assistance centers or shelters. And for that, according to the highest st international standards, get the support of civil society organizations in order to, pro while providing the necessary oversight. This process should include the involvement of civil society organizations through an institutional working table that is uh, also supervised by the commission uh, in compliance with article 112 of the general law of the rights of girls, boys and adolescents. Uh, a national register of social assistance centers should be carried out with clear mechanisms so that the protections offices allow for the authorization registry certification and oversight. And for that, it is necessary to allocate the budget and to have a specialized personnel at the federal and at the local level. It is also necessary to comply with the obligation that the registry is available on the website of the national system um, for the family. Also, it is necessary for the authorities to comply with the obligation to determine the legal situation of each boy and girl that are in these institutions in order to guarantee their 
right to live in a family according to international standards. This doesn't mean that we are promoting the deinstitutionalization that does not guarantee the protection of the rights of boy girls and adolescents. The creations of adequate protocols to determine the superior or the best interest of the boy, girl, or adolescents without family care so that he or she should have the right to be heard. And this includes uh, residential shelters according to the national and international standards. Six, the Mexican state should comply with its obligation to prevent, investigate, sanction, and repair the violations of human rights by making the follow by taking the following actions regarding prevention the design and implementation of programs of family strengthening that avoid the loss of parental care the granting uh, to the victims of violations of human rights uh, committed in public or private centers guarantees of non-repetition including the definite closure of the institutions in which those violations were committed especially la ciudad de los niños uh, create, uh, promote the training of ministerial and judicial uh, staff regarding the uh, with an approach regarding the rights of the child and child uh, violence regarding investigation we uh, they need to question or to investigate the violations of human rights according to inter-american standards of impartiality efficacy and independence regarding sanctions there should be uh, also measures in order in the administrative, civil, and criminal areas regarding reparation. The victims need to be acknowledged with a public pardon and reparation to the harms of boys, girls, and adolescents should be guaranteed. Uh, with regard to the, uh, this should be done in compliance with the constitutional obligation to promote human rights. The state of Mexico should carry out campaigns, activities of training, and in order to create awareness to the, in the public general and the general public and also regarding the uh, public officials related to these areas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know if anybody else would like to take the floor. If not, you can use those two minutes later. Thank you very much. Before giving the floor to the state, I would like to thank the testimony of Eduardo Verdunzo because, and I would like to mention his full name because she said, he said that during his childhood, one of the violations was the change of his identity. Uh, I would like to thank him for giving, for being here and giving uh, talking about his experience today. I know that this is a very difficult situation and you have to be very brave to tell all the things that he told us. And I would like to thank you especially to you, Eduardo Verduzco Verduzco. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to the state. You will have 20 minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, everybody. We would like to uh, great, especially the commissioners of the Inter American Commission of Human Rights, and also we want to greet the new Madam President. We are happy for your election. Thank you, commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here today. Good afternoon again, uh, commissioners, representatives of civil society, and my, uh, ladies and gentlemen that are following this here, and also a special greeting to all the boys and girls that uh that's why we are having this hearing today we are here with a lot of uh sensibility and disposal and we would like to have this dialogue with the inter-american commission of human rights the institutions that will be dealing with this topic that those that are the ones that are in charge of this area and that will be participating in this area are here, uh, represented by Alejandro Gonzalo Polanco Mireles, that is from the Welfare Secretariat, Oliver Castaneda Correa, there is the Federal Prosecutor for Boys, Girls and Adolescents, and also Constanza Tort San Román, that is in charge of the Executive Secretariat of the CIPINA. And I will give them the floor. Uh, and after that, after Constanza, we will give the floor back to the commission so as to start with the conversation. We would like to greet all of you. And also I would like to greet 
Eduardo Verduzco, Verduzco, especially thank you for his testimony that shows the violations that lead, uh, that have led to this hearing. Uh, during this part of or this part of history of the country, human rights are key because they are necessary for the transformation of the social life, and that includes the transformation of the life of, of every people, especially those people who have been historically discriminated, in this case, boys, girls, and adolescents. And we would like to, uh, we're here to support the other agencies of the government. So I would like to give the floor to the Secretary of Welfare now. Thank you. On behalf of the uh, Secretary of Wel uh, Welfare, uh, I would like to, greet you all. I would like to greet also representatives from civil society organizations. I would like to say that the lack of resources cannot be a factor that dismantles Mexican families. And because of that, I'm following presidential instructions of the executive power. The Secretary of Welfare has strengthened the portfolio of social programs as an affirmative action in the area of human rights towards families. Uh, which include girls, boys, and adolescents. I would like to mention something that is very important. Subsidies and pensions that are uh, delivered are without intermediaries. They go directly to the beneficiaries through two social programs that we apply in three modalities. I will explain them as follows. We have the program for the support of the welfare of uh, both girls and adolescents or working mothers. And it has, it provides an economic support to mothers, fathers, or gardens that uh, protect boys and girls between one and up to four years of age. And these are boys and girls that have a disability between one or six years old. So in those cases, we double the benefit. If there is a disability, we double the support or the economic support for these uh, families. In 2020, we had 268,447 boys and girls that are already enjoying this benefit. The second modality is a support to girls, boys, and adolescents that have no mother from the very beginning uh, from their birth and up to the year 23 years of age. This includes the children of 7,096,560 women so that if they die, their children will have the support. It, towards the end of 2020, 40,990 boys, girls, and adolescents whose mothers died are receiving this support by the Mexican government. The pension for the well being of persons with disabilities is another program of the Mexican government that gives a support to. Uh, Mexican citizens for those boys and girls between zero and 29 years old, especially we are granting right now 1 million pensions. And in order to finish, I would like to say that the program that has been presented for persons with disabilities is the first one in our history and is now part of the constitution. And therefore it is a human right in our country in Mexico. I would like to give the floor to the national system DIF so that they can continue with the presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Madam um, Commissioner, as part of the programs developed by the Mexican state, uh, I want to highlight the comprehensive strategies to assist uh, uh, community development and food that is within um, another program, the Sajunos Escolares, that is aimed at fostering access and consumption of nutritive uh, food. Annually, 
we distribute 120 million 972 thousand rations of food in the Mexican Republic. With the this strategy, in the 1,000 program, we assist almost 80,000 pregnant women, 157,000 children under the age of two years. And we focus on a positive uh, raising and assuring a vital minimum. Programs and actions that are described uh, institutionalization of children and adolescents should be the final resort. In cases of string need, federal authorities and local authorities should adopt um, measures of protection and special care for minors that are in a situation of vulnerability due to psychological, physical factors, um, issues regarding cultural identity, ethnical or national origin, migrating situation, or those related to gender, sexual preference, religious belief of cultural practices. After the approval of the general law for the rights of children and adolescents, the Mexican state developed a normative that complies with the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Today, several entities in the Republic present progress in their implementation, but we are sure that there are multiple aspects that could be improved. The national system for the comprehensive development of families is the public body that is decentralized in charge of coordinating the national system of public and private social assistance focused on all sectors, social, public and private, for the effective protection and restitution of the rights of children and adolescents. The legislation on the matter has stated the national system for the comprehensive development of the family should reform its organic statute in order to create um, the Office of the um, Attorney General for the Protection uh, in coordination with other uh, offices for the protection that are federatives to authorize, register, certify, and supervise uh, social assistance centers. This will reduce uh, times of uh, institutionalization and standardize the information for the inscription. In Mexico, social assistance centers that are private, public, and associations that provide uh, services to protect um, and provide comprehensive attentions to children and adolescents are responsible for guaranteeing their physical and psychological integrity. Thus, services should be oriented to their fulfillment uh, of their rights. We have designed uh, within the DIF different methodologies to work with different government agencies at the federal and local level and a mechanism of national coordination called Conference of Procurators to, of, for the Protection of Children and Adolescents. And we have fostered processes such as the regulation of social assistance centers with the support of UNICEF and HUCONI, among others. Regarding certification, the National System for the Comprehensive Development of Families has the uh, standard EC0934 for the attention of children and adolescents in social assistance centers and EC0963 for the attention of children and adolescents with disabilities. Such standards make reference to the performance of those persons that are devoted to the care of children and adolescents and their activities include daily attention, food hygiene, support regarding their clothing, attention and participation in social development activities and protect those persons that are institutionalized. Training and certification of staff of the DIF is part of a Profanization strategy to favor comprehensive attention and guarantee the rights of those of the social assistance centers. 
Also, we carry promotion and dissemination of the rights of children and adolescents. We provide con um, consulting services and training. We carry out workshops and forums and for aimed at the um, citizens in general, uh, public officials, and the group that uh, of interest to prevent violence, for example. We also carry out visits in order to verify the functioning of social assistance centers so that these have the comprehensive services that are multidisciplinary for the attention of children and adolescents. At the federal level, the mechanism to follow up, control and supervise these centers is carried out through an app, Cédula de Supervisión, that allows the follow-up program of observations and recommendations. In 2019, 400 social assistance centers were supervised in 2020, uh, just 220 due to the limitations caused by the pandemic. Apart from the public and private social assistance centers, the DIF also works on the following centers, Casa Cuna Tlaplan, Casa Cuna Coyoacán, Casa Hogar para Niñas, Centro Amanecer para Niños, and Casa Hogar para Varones. Since 2019, in these five centers, we, uh, we do a follow-up and supervision at least twice a year of attention uh, plans that are individualized, restitution of rights, legal situation, and also the possible disinstitutionalization of the children. Regarding the progress on the attention of specific cases um, to which these organizations of the civil society may reference, we would like to highlight that regarding La Casita and Amor para Compartir today, none of them works as a social assistance center. Regarding the case known as La Gran Familia o Mamá Rosa in Zamora, Michoacán, taking into account the recommendation for TBG 2018 issued by the National Commission on Human Rights, we informed that this body that we are waiting for the resolution on behalf of the Commission, National Commission. Taking into account the Casa Hogar para Niñas Graciela Subirán Villarreal, it's important to highlight that in November 2019, there were different risk factors that were detected and they were also um, proved by the follow-up report. I will now give the floor to Constanza. Good afternoon, commissioners, to everyone present in this meeting. In Mexico, a special protection is part of the comprehensive protection that is aimed at guaranteeing the rights of children and adolescents in the country. We, we do not take into account the, uh, the particular situation. We have created a national system for the protection of children and adolescents, and all the present authorities and the state CIPINA and the executive secretariat are participating and that enable the coordination of actions to coordinate uh, different policies, programs, strategies, and actions as the ones we have mentioned before, with the aim of articulating public policy actions to promote and protect in a comprehensive way, the rights of children and adolescents, a national program for the protection of children and adolescents, Rapina, includes the priority strategy 4.2, aimed at strengthening the uh, context, decrease institutionalization, approve adoption procedures and regulate social assistance centers. On the other hand, after Mexico became part in 2016 to the Global Alliance to put an end to violence against childhood, it became one of the pioneer uh, countries, um, the COPREVNA, a 
body integrated by the federal authorities and civil society organizations and it approved a plan of action 2019-2024 that um, it's made up by 21 lines of actions in four strategy public safety and social participation of children and adolescents protection of victims of violence prevention of violence in different contexts and territories uh, among which there are uh, children and adolescents that are in institutionalized and the eradication of gender-based violence. Taking into account the recommendations made by the Committee of Human Rights of the United Nations to Mexico, the Executive Secretary, Secretariat of the CPNA promotes the development, development of a model of alternative care that contributes to um, network of civil society shelters to promote standards that protect and provide attention, providing emphasis to the diversity in their context and the different situations of vulnerabilities they face, with the aim of promoting the participation of children and adolescents in those processes that involve them, and within the framework of the development of the sixth and seventh report consolidated in Mexico regarding the fulfillment of the Convention of the Rights of the Child presented in December 2020, in which for the first time their voices were incorporated, we have consulted 3,023 3, children and adolescents. Some of them were living in institutions or in a modality of family care. 31 of these children and adolescents provided um, their, gave their opinion on the opportunities and proposals based on their experience in the social assistance centers. And they highlighted that they provide attention, they uh, promote expression, follow up of their studies. Some of them think that they provide basic needs such as housing, food, health and education, and that they promote collaboration and play. Part of the sector of the population will not agree with this. So as opportunities to improve that were identified um, that adolescents that stay institu institutionalized for a long time, there is no information regarding the process of adoption and their contact with their families is limited. Adolescents have less privacy during their stay and they highlight that they feel locked. They have few freedoms in general. They especially mention they feel discriminated by other children and adolescents. Regarding the proposals to improve their situation, they mention the need to work with families to avoid family delusion and um, to comply with their duties to raise children. The children should have a family that make them happy. In the centers, we should promote dialogue with them in order to know how they feel, what are their needs. We have to facilitate process of adoption or reintegration to their families, respect their opinions and their decisions and authorize the presence of pets in the institution. That institution shows the relevance of listening to children and adolescents, and the Mexican state wants to re uh, restate the mechanism for participation in order to know their opinion and uh, take decisions based on that. I will now give the floor to the Secretariat of uh, Foreign Affairs. Thank you. That would be all, Commissioners and Madam President. Thank you. Thank you to the representatives of the states for all the information that has been provided. I also would like to thank the representatives of the states. I also would like to greet the ambassador that I know that she's present today in the hearing. I thank you for your presentations. For you. Now it's the time for the commission to make comments and to make questions. First, I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Arosemena. She's the country reporter and is also the reporter for the, for the rights of children and adolescents. 
Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to greet especially Eduardo. I would like to thank you for your strength. I recognize your values. I must say that it was very impressive to listen to you, to listen to, to, listen to your voice. Those are your rights. That are, that are your experiences. And I would like to tell you that our commitment as members of the Inter-American Commission is to see how our countries and in this opportunity, Mexico can materialize the protection to which children have a right. Eduardo, I would like to greet the representatives of the state of Mexico. I also would like to greet all the petitioner organizations of this hearing. And I would like to especially thank all of you from, for bringing to the table this problem that not only concerns Mexico. Some of our countries during the pandemic have faced very critical situations regarding the situation of boy, girls, and adolescents in institutions. And the responsibility of the state as a guarantor of the life and the integrity, the health of the living of the food, that um, obligation to protect against any abuse, that is the duty of the state. President, I would like to say some things. After listening to the petitioners, they are talking about a problem with the non-recognition or non-acknowledgement of rights, a situation where rights are not being respected and there is no public policy in favor of children and adolescents. And there is no approach regarding human rights. And I think that it's a very different position from that of the state who talked about the achievements, the programs, the progress made, the strategies in order to guarantee the comprehensive protection of rights. 2014, uh, I'm not sure if it was a the end of 2014, at the beginning of 2015, Mexico was one of the leaders regarding national systems of protections of children's rights. For nine years, Mexico has had a law or a system or institutions to develop at a national level, at a federal level, the articulation that the representatives of the state were talking about. So we need to see where we are right now when it comes to the compliance of these regulations. I have us praise all these regulations as rapporteur for children's rights. I have praised the state of Mexico for the vision and for the 
institutional structure that was created in order to ensure that there is not a single institution that is responsible for guaranteeing children's rights, but that all institutions have a responsibility to guarantee all the rights in a preventive way first, so that those uh, violations do not occur. That's the first idea that I would like to present. And then I would like to ask you, both parties, which the barriers are why are the barriers which are the barriers that prevent these programs and strategies from becoming real if today i have a group of civil society organizations that are here that they are telling me that today the ch uh, child protection institutions do not have professionals, do not have permits that torture uh, acts are committed there. So I would like to know the actual situation. In order to request the state to reply and to ensure the rights of girls, boys, and adolescents after all the requests that have been already made in the past. So it's necessary that in the evaluation that we make today regarding what is the public policy that exists in favor of children, but with a vision uh, or if we, with a human rights approach, with the recognition of children as holder of rights, but at some time these children belong to families and that policy should be in favor of families. It shouldn't be just a response uh, or and that the first response is not to take children out of their houses and placing them in institutions and after they are placed in institutions they can stay there for six years or ten years that is not the answer that is not what should happen institutional is uh, placing a, a child in an institution is a last resource. I would like to know which programs exist that guarantee that if a child goes to an institution, if there is a need, wow, which are the programs that are going to guarantee the rights of those children? Because there could be a situation in which a child needs to be placed in an institution, but we need to have a program and or a comprehensive program for that. This is not a simple situation. And I would like to conclude my intervention by pointing out two aspects. First, the commission since 2013 has a report, a thematic report on the rights of children to live with their families. We sought to prevent institutionalization. We, in these recommendations, or in the recommendation of this report from 2013, we are trying to monitor the compliance of the recommendations in that report because the commission has describe ways in order to address this process. Institutionalization should be the last resource and the institutionalization should be as soon as possible. And that is something that should be 
uh, there that every public servant should be aware of these processes and of these two uh, things. The commission has a specific recommendations in this area in order to guarantee the monitoring and the oversight of the rights of the children. And the second aspect has to do with uh, with what the Executive Secretary Maria Claudia Pulido could emphasize during this period of session. We have established and the Commission has approved an agreement or a cooperation agreement that is a tripartite cooperation in order to have a system of registry of monitoring, in order to identify all the shelters and homes in each country, and with all the information that is duly registered in order to guarantee that the process of institutionalization occurs according to the terms recommended by the commission. Also, the Committee for Children's Rights also made the same recommendation. And this is a system, it's a software. And the commission is interested to make this software available to states so that states can prepare plans, programs, follow-up tools, and registry tools. You say that you have a registry, but at the same time, civil society organizations said that there are no registries that are full, uh, that not all children have been identified. So we need to Consider that this issue is a priority because children are children and they should enjoy their rights while they are children and not when they have uh, become adult, uh, adults. So the, the commission is offering the states, is a software. In this case, we are offering the state of Mexico, uh, sharing this software. Uh, children first software or system and this system guarantees an oversight and also an evaluation and also a follow up of that evaluation. So I would like to mention this system and I would like to know from state and from civil society organization representatives. Why this public policy that is there cannot be materialized, cannot be realized because we see that children are not protected and are being victims of violence as Eduardo said in his testimony. Thank you, and sorry, Commissioner and Madam President. It's okay. Thank you, Commissioner. I know that this is a topic that you feel passionate about. Uh, I think um, Commissioner May Macaulay, I don't see her. I don't know if she would like to take the floor. So I would like to give the floor to her. Thank you, Madam President. I am here. I'm trying to rest my back because I have a pain in my back. Um, um, thank you so much, everyone, for your presentations and, and information you've given us. I particularly want to thank Eduardo and myself for giving us the account of what you went through. As my sister commissioner, uh, um, Esmeralda said, you're very brave and very courageous, and I wish you a very good, successful, and happy future. I just have three short questions to ask both sides, because I know we have very little time, Madam President. 
And this is, I am going under my, my hat, the Afro-descendant hat. Um, could the state and the representatives give a say whether there are any children and adolescents of Afro-descendant who are Afro-descendant Mexicans in these institutions? Because we haven't been able to, to get um, any information about that up to today. And also, if there are, about how many do you know about? Because I know you cannot give me exact numbers today. And also, my third question is, um, do you have any information about the discrimination, if any, which they have suffered for being um, Afro-Mexicans or persons, other persons of color? Um, if you cannot answer today, could you just inform me that you will try to find out the information? and send it on to us at the um, commission. I would be most grateful and so would the commission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Estuardo Rallon. Thank you, Madam President. I want to greet all my colleagues, the representatives from the civil society, representatives of the state, I want to greet and acknowledge uh, Eduardo as well. His testimony was very brave and very valuable. And I want to apologize for being uh, minute, some minutes late, but there was a connectivity issue that uh, did not allow me to start at the exact time. I would like to ask a question in connection with taking into account the uh, statement made by civil society organizations. They were saying that there, there is no registry of uh, centers, uh, both public and private. So this information is not robust in order to provide the correct follow-up. So my question is to the state, Regarding the existence of this uh, record, uh, what are the challenges that may be improved in order to follow up information in the centers? As the rapporteur for persons with disabilities, the participation of the state mentioned, the representatives mentioned that there has been public policy for persons with disabilities from zero to nine, 29 years. So I want to congratulate this uh, decision. I want to congratulate you. And if you can provide more information about such valuable decision, it could be very important. This is an example for the, rest can, for the other countries in the region. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I will now give the floor. Interim Executive Secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido. Commissioner Esmeralda made reference to uh, technical cooperation uh, with a company called, with a software called Children First. This is very important for the commission in terms of the rights of the child. Thank you, Madam President. I want to greet you all. The Inter-American Commission following the report presented um, in connection with institutionalized children, it signed a cooperation agreement uh, with for them believing that promotes the use of a software called Children First that is aimed at providing technical assistance in order to gather all the information to technically manage the follow-up of the information of children and adolescents that are institutionalized. The commission has signed this cooperation agreement with the idea of 
making it available for the states in the region and we are going to um, get in contact with the states and with the team that specializes on children and adolescents. This is the first time that the Commission is doing this time of uh, tripartite cooperation because it considers that children and adolescents should be at the center of the attention and they should have all the statistical data and all the information about the profiles of children and adolescents so that is uh, management of this information is more humane that is the goal of this technical cooperation so i just want to say that the commission has uh, made the decision of following these uh, directions so we will be sending more information about it in the future thank you maria claudia will now give the floor to the uh, special reporter on social economic cultural and environmental rights Soledad garcia muñoz Thank you, Madam President. I want to greet the civil society representatives of the state, and especially Eduardo Verduzco Verduzco. I want to highlight the bond that seems to exist between the link that exists between poverty and the situations that we have heard about. I would like to listen more about this relation and how the Mexican state is uh, planning on working on this situation as our uh, country rapporteur and reporter on the rights of the child, this situation affects all rights, the projects of lives of children and adolescents as well. Thank you, Soledad. I think that all questions have been asked. I'm interested in listening to the representatives uh, of the civil society and the state. First of all, I will give the floor to the civil society. As you did not use all your time, you have 14 minutes now. If you want to use the time to make comments and answer the questions of my colleagues. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. I want to greet all the commissioners, the representatives of the Mexican state and my colleagues. I will try to be brief and provide answer to some of the questions that uh, were mentioned by the commissioners. In 2014, we passed the Comprehensive right, uh, Law on the Rights of Children and Adolescents that creates the Comprehensive Plan for the Protection of Children and Adolescents and the Executive Secretariat. It has been a milestone in Mexico because up to that time, we lack an institution, a body that coordinated public policies at the federal, state, and municipal level in connection with the rights of chi uh, the child. The following year, the system was implemented and they started um, articulating these public policies. In spite of the fact that we congratulate this law and many of us participated in this law and implementation of a system that is necessary to strengthen this system. From the very beginning, this system was not assigned a budget and that is part of the problem that gathers here today. There was a structure and resources were allocated, human resources, at a federal uh, level and in each of the states. But also, the same law connection with the topic we are dealing with today that are social assistance centers or the institutions that are taking care of children and adolescents. The responsibility was of the uh, general attorney's office to register all the um, children and adolescents and the faculties were shared, the flowers were shared with local entities. These historically has been a problem in connection with the guarantee of the children's right. The system causes uh, problems in Mexico. S sometimes the local entities do not uh, comply with their duties. These protection uh, bodies have different compositions, different levels, 
different hierarchy in the structure and different batches. Although this is stated in the federal law, what are the requirements the center should comply with? Who has the duty of uh, taking care of the registry or the records? This duty has not been fulfilled. There, for many years, we have heard that this information is being gathered, but we do not have a public um, information about these social assistance centers and the neither about the children and adolescents that are living in these institutions. This has taken us to the present day. The law states this duty belongs to certain authorities within the Mexican state, but this, what the law says is not being complied with. We have different situations in each institution, in each state of the Republic, we have different problems. So we believe that the Mexican state should, should know that the care of children and adolescents is a duty of the state. There is an obligation to register and supervise the situation. Uh, these child protection offices should control this. We do not lack the legal instruments. I think a lot of progress has been made in that sense, as Commissioner Arosemena has mentioned, but there is a lack of compliance that has translated into the fact that children and adolescents, as Eduardo's testimony has shown, uh, are still living under these circumstances. On the other hand, we also see a lack of attention to individual cases regarding reparation of damages. We consider this to be essential, although law also states in the last part, a restitution of rights um, plan for children and adolescents in, under any circumstances when their violated have been, when the rights have been violated. So this is a pending agenda in the case of the Mexican state that has to comply with this um, reparation of damages. And I would like to close now. I want to mention the social programs that the representatives from the state mentioned. Although these social programs are aimed at the families, they have not supported the economic uh, subsidies to a program of the uh, child uh, raising capacities for parents. Although this may be positive, this economic aid, if this is not accompanied by the strengthening of their raising capabilities in the long term, will not have an impact on the lives of children and adolescents. And they will end up in a process of institutionalization. We need a comprehensive policy focused on children and adolescents lead, uh, to lead these uh, social programs. Thank you. I would like to make reference to some of the concerns mentioned by Commissioner Rosemena. One of the questions that she asked has to do with the obstacles for the normatives to be complied with, although as Dr. Monica Gonzalez mentioned, we have progress in the development of that institutionality. There is a pending task that has to do with the hierarchy given to the comprehensive systems of care in the states of the Republic, in the different municipalities as well. There has been an unequal work uh, in the development of this institution, some of the system of protection of children and adolescents subpoena have a certain level of strength and certain protection offices are strong and they are able to articulate uh, in order to deal with not only the with issues related to the protection of children and adolescents and their families, but also to search for the to guarantee the rights that is not the case for all the states and the municipalities many municipalities 
the weakness of this protection system is very clear and that uh, prevents the fulfillment of the of this system articulated at different levels of uh, government at the national level. That is a pending task that we should develop, the state should develop this and the state and the society as well. This is an issue that has to do with the prioritization of children and adolescents in the national policy. In spite of the constitutional um, discussion in terms of their rights, I feel that this sector of the population is still invisible. It is not a priority as part of public policies. There is a margin for opportunity that is very important to think about a governance focused on childhood and giving, taking that step in terms of a national system that is well articulated, that gathers all the different instances and dependencies of the federal government that is essential. Although there are institutions and instances as a specific responsibility in terms of uh, children and adolescents, the situation of childhood is transversal and it encompasses all, all public administration at the federal uh, level, but also the level of the states and the municipalities. I think there is an opportunity there and that should be addressed and developed and finally, in terms of the institutionalization of children and adolescents, we all agree that should be the last reason, the last measure to be implemented. But we should do not lose sight of the size of the pro problem. There are thousands of children without family care. And in Mexico, there the possibility of alternative care has not been developed, uh, whether it is family-based care or adoption. These are mechanisms are not enough to uh, prevent the institutionalization. That is a challenge for our country. And in social assistance centers, children should be able to redefine, to that allow them if they will not receive alternative care, they can have at least a human rights approach in their care as rights holders and in an environment that allows them to exercise their right to a family and community life. We do not want institutionalization, but we need to observe that this should occur under different circumstances and social assistance centers, maybe they can start playing a different role, not just um, guardianship spaces to become places in which they can develop a national um, strategy to establish a continuum of protection for children and adolescents in all senses to strengthen the families, looking at reintegration um, possibilities uh, through the reconstruction of the families, looking at the different elements to um, redesign this uh, social web so that they can have this uh, life with their families and communities. This is something we we could uh, maybe discuss another time. We do not have enough time right now, but we need a national policy to deal with this problem. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to greet the commissioners and the representatives of the government of Mexico. And I would like to talk about two aspects that I think that are very relevant. The first has to do with this protection vision that we still have as a nation. And it's fundamental that we need to include or to have these human rights 
uh, approach, including public servants. It's important that public servants are trained with this human rights approach. And I think that taking into consideration the current status of social assistance centers, we need to understand that each uh, each child should be have access to the restitution uh, restitution of their rights, and that should be the focus that we should use for childhood. This is not this this is the same for civil society organizations and for the state, and we should have a promote the participation of children. We should restitute rights and also. We need to take into consideration also the reparation of harm, because even though some uh, institutions are closed, but we don't have the records of all the victims and all the restitution and reparation plans should be there for each child within those centers. Thank you very much. Thank you, civil society organizations. I would like to give the floor now for 12 minutes to the representatives of the state. Thank you. We have listened to all the questions and all the comments that have been made by civil society organizations and by the commissioners. In our constant dialogue that we have with the commission, we take these recommendations seriously. We know that they are very relevant. Um, in this regard, in order to answer those questions, and we know that we are running out of time, we would like to give the floor to the different institutions and agencies that are responsible for this area. We would like to highlight the following as Commissioner Rosemena said, she's also a rapporteur for children, we have the commitment to continue working with you on those elements that we could, in which we could work together in order to guarantee the rights of boys, girls, and adolescents. I would like to give the floor to well, uh, welfare, the I DIF system, and to the foreign ministry. Then. Thank you. I would like to answer first the question made by Commissioner Arosemena regarding uh, uh, the Commissioner Margaret regarding Afro Mexicans. Uh, the good news is that, given your concern in Mexico, Afro uh mexican children were not made visible the national institution uh, institute of the indigenous peoples in its last census included this figure and i could uh send you the information and we can tell you that our mechanisms through which we grant pensions or benefits or subsidies to uh, children in institutions, also pensions for persons with disabilities, and also children that are the uh, sons or daughters of working mothers or fathers are also within the population of Mexico, and we are including them in those programs. Um, also, I would like to read this. We will cover as a priority, the following, the persons that live in indigenous municipalities or where 40% of the population or more are Afro descendants, they should be a priority. This is the first time that the Mexican state is making visible a very important group, but making a priority their age and their Afro and Mexican status and when it comes to persons with disabilities we also will give a priority to indigenous people and to afro-mexicans uh, before this was not made visible and this is the first time in 2021 that we can give this very good news and patricia carretera was mentioning something that is the 
inconsistency between the support through a subsidy, but then people do not have a guide about what to do with that support. So maybe we should improve that. We can give more education. The DIF system and us uh, with this synergy, the PINA has joined us. The DIF system has been a great partner. They have done a great job. They are guiding us in order to uh, connect the support and that this support has an impact on the families. Uh, as one of the commissioner was saying, they were asking about the program for persons with disabilities. This is the first time that we have a program for persons with disabilities. This is the first time that they have a support and we are making a priority for uh, children from indigenous and Afro-Mexican communities. So if out of the 1 million of people that could be covered with a budget, if that uh, million of people are is uh, completed, we will give priority to Afro-Mexican and indigenous peoples. And that should be the permanent trend in our policy. And now I would like to give the floor to the DIP system. Uh, I think that they should take the floor now. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody again. First, I would like to say that there is a commitment, there is an obligation and a great challenge to continue to comply with the legal framework related to the protection of the rights of boys, girls and adolescents by the state of Mexico and also by the system or the national system of the comprehensive protection of the family. We will work with the federal agencies and with municipal agencies and bodies. We need to strengthen the work of the protection offices in order to have a better coverage to be more efficient regarding the interventions that these offices should have. And I would like to say that all the protection offices are working especially on the issues that they should address. And they have to do with the protection measures and restitution programs and plans. Because we have a system of work with protection offices. And we are also providing legal services for children and adolescents and for their parents or uh, guardians. That is a word that we need to strengthen all the time. Also, I would like to say that one of the main aspects or one of the priorities for the offices of child protection is the right to live in a family. And the homologation of adoption proceedings and the promotion that the federal government is giving to this is at a municipal level and at a state level are working a lot. They are being very fruitful. And the same is happening with the family shelter or family foster care program because we have a foster care for two minors, a girl and an adolescent. They are migrants. One is from El Salvador and the other is from India. And now we are working to certificate the families that in the future, in the near future, this is a very new, it's a new practice. There are many families that are going to get cert a certificate uh, to work as foster families. And we will have this national program. So all the protection offices will be able to continue working with this and we will strengthen this activity and this action so that we can guarantee a family environment for these children. I also would like to say that with regard to the records or the registries, as Monica Gonzalez was saying, we uh, have complaints that the records are not there. 
and sometimes they are there. This is a challenge that the system has. And we are working this and we are trying to consolidate this system with the protection offices. This is a goal for the first semester of 2021. We have a system of information records that is includes adoptions, professionals that should intervene in these adoption procedures. Also, they include those who have requested an adoption. And these records also include the foster care homes. And we are preparing a record on girls, boys, adolescents, and their uh, uh, assistants. And we are also having a record for social assistance centers. And we are preparing this record, and it will be consolidated in the first semester of this year. Now we are doing all the work together with the protection child, child protection office, offices. And in spite of all the situations that were mentioned by Dr. Gonzalez and all the legal structures and legal issues, we've been able to overcome, we have been able to homologate the systems. So we will be able to uh, work uh, in a better way and more quickly with these adoption processes. Regarding the National Institute for Social Assistance, we still, there are some information there, but there is a lot to be done. And of course, the work of civil society organizations is necessary because many of them are responsible for some social assistance centers. So we would like them to participate in these oversight and register procedures. We could not uh, make progress, but for civil society organizations and religious organizations and the private sector. So therefore, these type of hearings are very important to us. And in this regard, I also would like to say that we are working with both and believing through the embassy of the United States. Um, we are using the children's first software. We are advanced, we have advanced a lot with this software. In the second semester, we would like to start implementing this software. We believe that it has a lot of advantages and we know that it will help us a lot. And we are concluding with the first stage of our administrative records of information in order to be able to the implement with implementation of this software that is also promoted by the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And I would like to finish because I'm running out of time now by saying that currently the uh, Child Protection Office is following any news regarding violations of children's rights. We coordinate our work with federal agencies in order to follow and to intervene if necessary. For example, the situation of the state of Morelos. I would like to say that the center does not belong to the DIF system. It belongs to the municipal system. And last year, we conducted several actions or um, we saw that there was a a possible violation of the rights of adolescents and boys and girls. And we decided to monitor the situation. We requested information about the case. And also the public prosecutor office uh, gave us a permit in order to investigate the situation, to interview the 13 uh, adolescents that went to the drug treatment center. And after a writ of amparo, uh, as uh, the public prosecutor office uh, requested that we intervene in order to evaluate the violations of human rights that occurred there. And we are in a proceeding. We are not responsible, but we are working together with the authorities in order to determine the protection measures and the restitution programs that should be applied for the children and adolescents that are in, under this difficult situation in the state of Morelos. We are also having an active participation with other authorities and agencies at the federal level. We have participated with the National Guard and with the state secretary at, and with other national bodies. We are trying to work together in order to avoid these violations of human rights in these centers. We recognize that one of our challenges is the 
process of regulating all these social assistance centers. So welcome everybody who would like to help us coordinate all this work. Uh, I would stop there. Thank you again for the possibility of inter uh, presenting this. Good afternoon. Thank you to the representatives of the state and we are willing to keep on contributing to the commission. President Antonia Urrejola, we give you back the floor. Thank you for all the information from the civil society and the state. I would like to thank, I don't know how to say this, by the uh, tone of the hearing, there is an attitude uh, of dialogue, of exchange of information. I want to thank the representatives of the state and the civil society because I'm surprised by the level of preparation, but also the uh, proposals are very important. And I want to insist on one of the topics mentioned by the civil society about the permanent work to look at international standards in terms of children and adolescents that are institutionalized together with the commission. As you know, the commission and the reporter uh, Mexico, Commissioner Esmeralda, had this difficult task regarding the students of Anoxinapa and we are supporting the search for the disappeared and we have discussed the situation of mobility, the situation of children and adolescents in a center of social assistance. This is uh, very important for the commission to support you during this process. We are available to you and you know that the commission, the technical cooperation um, and that request from the civil society is very important and the commission is really interested in that matter. Thank you for being here today once again, Eduardo, for your testimony that was very important. Sometimes we provide general information about uh, the situation of vulnerability, but when we get the chance of listening to a victim and a person that has been re-victimized, that is something very valuable to us. It's very important because it allows us to understand the complexity, the complexities we are discussing and the seriousness of the situation. Thank you to everyone. We will see each other. Have a good afternoon and good uh, nice weekend. Thank you.